Good morning. Welcome to worship. We are delighted that you are here on behalf of the Congregation of Christ United Methodist Church. What a gift it is to be alive on this day. Yes? Thank you. I agree. Um, there are many announcements in your bulletin. I hope that you will uh, take them home and commit them to your hearts and your calendars. Uh, but as for now, as for this day, I invite you to rise as you're able and let's join our hearts in song. I invite you to join with me in prayer. We come with joy on this cool and fresh summer morning. We come to give you thanks, O God, for rain, for gentle breezes and bird songs. We are thankful for the goodness of the earth for sweet corn and fresh tomatoes, for snap peas and green beans. Thank you for all who work with the earth to sustain it and care for it, even as they grow food and raise animals and crops. O oh, loving God, we thank you for families and for friends who love and care for us. 
We are grateful for the kindness of strangers who offer us a parking spot, who let us go first in line, who share a smile and a friendly wave. We give you thanks for Christ United Methodist Church, our church home even as we pray for those who are new to our community of faith. We thank you for each one. Some are here for medical care. Some are new to Rochester. Some are here seeking a relationship with you, while others are here for special occasions. We pray, O oh God, for your blessing on those in the hospital and other medical facilities. We lift up Harry Buck and Cecilia Westfall. We pray for those who are facing difficult circumstances in their lives, and we ask you to comfort those who are grieving. Hold up those who lack faith and hope. Tender God, gather us as one body as we quiet our minds to hear your voice, as we listen, as we sing, as we learn in this hour of worship. Hear us now as we pray together. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Mother, Holy and blessed is your true name. We pray for your reign of peace to come. We pray that your good will be done. Let heaven and earth become one. Give us this day the bread we need. Give it to those who have none. Let forgiveness flow like a river between us, from each one to each one. Lead us to holy innocence beyond the evil of our days. Come swiftly, Mother, Father, come. For yours is the power and the glory and the mercy. Forever your name is all in one. Amen. I would like to invite the children forward if there are children here. And if there are not children here, are there children here today? Well, let's have Elliot come on up because she's going to be baptized today. And I'm just going to take this baby away from you. <laughs> because I am this baby's grandmother. This is Felix McKenzie. And this is Elliot Catherine Ann. And what we want to say on this day, hello. Oh, she shares. Oh, come on up, beautifuls. Come on up and meet these kids. All right. So, what we want to say on this day is that baby toes are some of the most delicious things God ever created. Isn't that true? Stuffed animals are wonderful. She can run wild if you want her to. You are miraculous. And people love you so very much. And one of the things that we're going to share with Elliot today is a thing called baptism. Oh, baby love, don't cry on me. Oh, he says. Um, we're going to give Elliot a blanket. And this blanket is made by people in the church. And the blanket symbolizes how much God loves each one of us. So we get to get wrapped up in God's good love, and we wrap each other in that love. So that's what I have to say on this day, and I'm going to give this baby back to his mother or his father. But this is Felix, and this is Elliot. What's your name? Ellie. Ellie? Charlie. Charlie. I am so glad you are here. God is good, yes? Will you pray with me? Dear God, thank you for the miracle of life and stuffed animals and beautiful children, and the ways that you call us each to be wrapped in your love. We pray all these things so grateful. Amen. Good job. I'm glad you came up. Thank you. Can you stand it? 
There you go. Thank you. I'll give him back, maybe. And you get to go back and sit with your moms and dads or your family. And we get to baptize this beautiful child. I'm going to put this right here. Come on up. Thanks, Nancy. How old is Elliot Catherine? 15 months. She has some spirit, <laughs> this one. She does. We like children with spirit. Mm -hmm. And so um, we'll go really fast. <laughs> Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation. And all of this is given to us without price. And so I introduce to you <laughs> Elliot, Catherine, and for baptism. And on behalf of the whole church, I ask you these questions. Do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness? Do you repent of your sin? Do you seek to do the very best you can to live good lives? If so, will you say, I do? I do. Do you accept the freedom and power that God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? If so, will you say, I do? And you confess that Jesus Christ is your Savior. You promise to put your whole trust in his grace. And will you serve him in union with all the people who are praying for this little one on this day and for all children in the world? Will you join in the movement of hope together? If so will you say, I will? And will you nurture these children? This is for all of us, Elliot, and all children in Christ's holy church, that by your teaching and example, she will be... <laughs> called to accept God's grace for herself and live her spirit in community with others? If so, will you say, we will? Yeah. Bravo. So, Pastor Nancy's going to pray. Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, we thank you for this gift of the water and the one who will receive it. We thank you how throughout time you have used water to bless people how in the beginning of time, your spirit, your life, your breath moved over the water and created all that is, and how in the fullness of time, you sent water upon the earth and made an everlasting covenant with Noah and his relatives, and how continuing through time, you sent your son, Jesus Christ, and how he was baptized by John the Baptist, and how Jesus in his life and ministry told his disciples that they were to go and baptize everyone in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And so as followers of Jesus, we continue this tradition of baptizing with water. And dear God, we ask your special blessing that you would be here with Elliot, Catherine, Anne, on this, her baptismal day, that she may grow up to learn all about you through her family, through her loved ones, through this church, so that she would, in time, come to be a faithful disciple of yours, and she be united with all your saints on earth and in heaven on this, her baptismal day. Amen. Amen. Pour out your Holy Spirit. So, let's see how this goes. <laughs> Elliot. See? Elliot, Elliot, back to your mom. There we go. <laughs> Body language is a powerful thing. So, little angel, can you see? Elliot, child of God, we baptize you in the name of the Father, oh, angel, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May God continue to work miracle through the gift of your spirit. May you know yourself, beloved, every moment of your life. Amen. Amen. And we also anoint because unlike water, oil sinks into the skin. And so delight of God's heart. You are a disciple of Christ Jesus. Live your life with gusto. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Will you walk with me? Oh, sorry. I'm just going to. There, there we go. Will 
Will you walk with me? So you can see Elliot closer up. Tell me one thing about your daughter. Come, come, come. Introduce this girl. She really likes puppies. She loves puppies and? And she's learning how to walk really well. She's learning how to walk and run, perhaps? Yep. yep. She just learned the words yes and no. She just <laughs> learned the important words in life, yes and no. We're working on please and thank you. Please and thank you, hopefully, to follow. <laughs> So every time we celebrate baptism, we get to soak into our own hearts and souls the awareness that not a one of us can do life alone and that God delights in us in just the way that God delights in Elliot. So there is a response in your bulletin. Will you join in reading that response together? Elliot Catherine. who is the eternal author of love. Amen. And so we sing this affirmation of our faith. Will you rise as you are able and let us join in song. You may be seated. I invite you to turn in the Red United Methodist hymnal to page number 801, and we will read responsively together 
Psalm 80. This psalm is during a time when the nation of Israel is in trouble and they plead for God's help. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, you who lead Joseph like a flock, you who are enthroned upon the cherubim, shine forth. In the presence of Ephraim and Benjamin and Manasseh, stir up your might and come to save us. O Lord God of hosts, how long will you be angry with your people's prayers? You make us the scorn of our neighbors, and our enemies laugh among themselves. You brought a vine out of Egypt. You drove out the nations and planted it. The mountains were covered with its shade, the mighty cedars with its branches. Why then have you broken down its walls so that all who pass along the way pluck its fruit? Turn again, O God of hosts, look down from heaven and see. They have burned it with fire, they have cut it down. May they perish at the rebuke of your countenance. Then we will never turn back from you. Give us life, and we will call on your name. Let us let us stand and sing.
Amen. You may be seated. Here in this place, we acknowledge the challenges of living in an unsettled world, and we acknowledge the power of hope and our ability to use the power God gives us to resist evil and injustice and oppression, and so we do as a church. So as we enter into this time of offering, I hope that you are aware of the power that you share, the power of hope, the power of presence, the power of a witness for grace in this world. Let's enter into offering.
Almighty God, may these gifts we dedicate this morning be used to bring love and light to sisters and brothers we haven't met yet. May our arms and legs be used to bring that hope into the world this day. In the name of Christ, our Redeemer, we pray. God, God you are glory. glory. We, we come, come before, before you to ask that, that you would use Christ's United, United Methodist, Methodist Church to broadcast, broadcast your grace. Use us to serve you and our, and our neighbors. neighbors. Call, Call us to boldly and tenderly reveal your glory. Stir us and lead us to be your witnesses. Wake us up and, and plant possibility in our hearts. We, we pray, pray through the powerful heart of, of Jesus, Jesus the Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. So some scene setting before I read this morning's text from the Hebrew Scriptures. Moses. Moses has been called to lead God's people from slavery into freedom. God has called Moses to be a leader, and while Moses initially tries to bargain his way out of being one charged with great responsibility, surely, Moses says to God, you could come up with anyone better and more qualified than I am. Moses eventually agrees to lead the people out of Egypt where they are living under grinding poverty and captivity under Pharaoh's reign. Moses agrees to lead the people out of Egypt and into the freedom of the land and the vision that God has provided for them. So led by a conflicted and reluctant leader, the Hebrew people set out for freedom. And they encounter the Red Sea. Maybe you remember this from your Sunday school classes or that Charlton Heston classic, right? Come on. They encounter the Red Sea, and God divides the water so that they can pass through. Surely they know God is with them because miracles are happening. And then, then they hit the desert. And the ambiguity of God's promises start to cause them to doubt the promises. They are hot. They are following with increasingly trudgy steps. They're unsure of this promise of freedom and abundance. They don't know really about God's grand vision. And that vision starts to take up less space in their souls. They can't really see this promised land. And they start to wonder, does that place really exist anyway? So instead of moving into this newness with a sense of confidence and excitement, the people of the Hebrew people begin to long for the good old days. The good old days that really, mind you, never were, right? The good old days had them working seven days a week, making bricks and glory for Pharaoh in order that he would grow rich on the sweat of their bodies. That's what the good old days were, right? But even though the good old days were bad for them, at least they knew what that bad was. They knew at least some security, knowing what life was. So they knew what was and this vision of the new land of abundance and the promises that God makes of a place and a time when there is enough for all people, even for refugees fleeing, fleeing oppression. That promise begins to lose its power. And dreams seem only for the naive and foolish. Who can afford to hope anymore? The people become afraid. 
So the Hebrew people do what people have done throughout time when they are afraid. They resort to worshiping the idol of glory days gone by. The promises of God about a bright future and an abundant future get lost in the soul mangle that gets created when fear takes over the space in our hearts where possibility lies. While Moses, in this book of Exodus, goes up Mount Sinai to commune with God, including in his time with God, pleading with God to not abandon this fearful and obstreperous and grumbling bunch, the people that are left behind at the base of the mountain make for themselves a less ambiguous God, a God they can see, a golden calf God, and they dance and they worship and they praise the God that they can reach out and touch. And Moses, encountering them when he comes down from the mountain with the Ten Commandments, which is God's love song to creation, right? Moses, in all of his heartbreak, takes those God-inscribed tablets and smiles smashes them on the ground. Maybe you've been frustrated enough to take something you love and cherish and feel like it will never be honored in the way it should be, and so you'd rather destroy it than have it sullied. Moses has had it. And it turns out God has had it too. God threatens to abandon the people, but Moses, reluctant leader that he is, Moses begs with God to change God's mind. He begs God to stay with a people who are prone to fear in the midst of so much unknown, in the so much ambiguity of the time. Moses begs God, God, would you help us? Would you show us your glory? We're so tired of being afraid. Hear this conversation between Moses and God and hear how it is God responds to the searing need of God's fearful people. This is a word for us. Moses said to God, look, you tell me lead this people but you don't let me know where you're gonna send me. You tell me, I know you well and you are special to me. If I'm so special to you, let me in on your plans. That way, I will continue being special to you. Don't forget, this is your people, your responsibility. God said to Moses, my presence will go with you I will see the journey to the end. Moses said, if your presence doesn't take the lead here, call this trip off right now. How else will it be known that you are with me in this, with me and your people? Are you traveling with us or are you not? How else will we know that we are special I and your people, among all the other people on the planet Earth. And God said to Moses, All right, just as you say, I will do this for you. For I know you well, and you are special to me. I know you by name. Moses said, Please, please let me see your glory. And God said, I will make my goodness pass right in front of you. I will call out the name God right before you. I will treat well whomever I want to treat well, and I will be kind to whomever I want to be kind. And God continued, but you may not see my face because no one can see me and live. God said, Look, here's a place right beside me. Put yourself on this rock, and when my glory passes by, I will put you in the cleft of the rock and cover you with my hand until I have passed by, and then I will take my hand away and you will see my back, but you won't see my face. 
May God add a blessing to the reading of this word. Here is the something for us to hold on to in this time when we too can sometimes feel like we are wandering in the desert of fear and we too feel perhaps called to dance around a greatness that never was. And we too maybe feel like we would rather worship an unambiguous God made of gold or steel. And we too long for leaders who will point us toward the teachings and the promises that God has given us, a land flowing with milk and honey, a land abundant enough for all, a land in which justice and freedom are lived by all of God's children, all of God's children, Elliot and Felix, all of God's children even in times like these, and maybe especially in times like these, we believe that God shows up. Two weeks ago, unspeakable violence shattered the lives of people who were out for a good time in Dayton, Ohio, and people who were shopping for back-to-school supplies in El Paso, Texas. One of the women killed in El Paso was the only family of a man named Antonio Basco. She was it for him. He runs a car wash. He looks like a man who has lived a rough life. Margie Record, his wife of 22 years, and a woman who was living with Parkinson's disease, was mown down in that store by a man who was consumed by hatred for brown bodies. Margie had children, but Antonio was worried that when they celebrated her life and named their grief over her too soon death, that no one would show up for her funeral. So the funeral directors put out a Facebook post letting people know when the service would be. And after they put out that Facebook post, over 10,000 people posted words of comfort and support and tribute. People from New Zealand and Australia and Japan, as well as people who live in the United States of America, the funeral that had been planned to be held at the funeral home had to be moved to a larger temple in order to accommodate all of the people who wanted to stand in solidarity with Antonio, a man they had never met, and they came from a across the country they came from around the world people came and they filled that worship center and hundreds stood in line waiting to get into the space and there were flowers everywhere strangers heard the call and out of their shared sense of grief and out of their shared conviction that their presence and their witness and their solidarity mattered they poured into the heartache of a man who thought he was alone they poured into the heart of a man because they believed that he is their kin We understand the need of Moses. We understand the fear of a people languishing in a seemingly endless desert. We know the ways of fear. We know what it is to long for surety, for something we can say, yes, this right here. We know what it feels like when God can sometimes feel so elusive and we too have cried out, God, show us your glory. Haven't we? We're tired of living in fear. I am tired of living in fear. And we so long to remember God's promises 
And we know this, God does respond. Sometimes all that we can see is the backside of God's glory. And God's backside looks like this. God's backside looks like people with stirred hearts streaming into a funeral service for a woman they'd never met in order to bear witness to the power of empathy and compassion and solidarity and that power power and that hope and that vision is greater than any fear. Sometimes God's backside is all we have and it's enough. Amen. Let's sing. what we believe here is what we trust. God travels with us. Whether we are in an operating theater, whether we are seeking healing from deep grief, whether we are raising children and loving them with all we've got, God is in it with us and God plants huge dreams. And they are not just for the naive and foolish. They are for those who are willing to step out and move into the beauty of a world in which all have enough, all know kinship. Go in that power and in that peace. Amen. Amen.